Are you wondering how to see the Sistine Chapel without the crowds? One way is to come here first thing in the morning. I used to tell you to come take these early bird tours that enter the museums before the general public, but as of 2024, the Vatican has new rules. Now the museums open daily at 8 a.m. and everybody can go in at that hour and there are no tours going in before that hour except for the Keymaster tour. As you can see behind me, there is a line of people who already have reservations just like me. So I'm going to get in that line. We're going to go in at opening time of 8 o'clock. I'm going to take you with me to the Sistine Chapel so you'll know the exact route to follow if you want to do the same. After the Sistine Chapel, I'm going to show you how you can visit the museums on your own and afterwards, I'm going to show you how to visit St. Peter's Basilica also on your own. And at the end of this video, you will understand the difference between taking an early bird tour and doing it on your own, so you can make an informed decision as to which one is right for you. As you can see, I'm supposed to go in in passageway one. Guys, the line is crazy and it's a Monday in February and this is the line for people who have tickets. There is also a line for people waiting to buy tickets but those people will not get in at 8 o'clock like we will so if you want to do this you've got to get your ticket online in advance. There are tour groups that are already in line and they're also going to go in at 8 o'clock so we're all going in at the same time. So if I got to skip the line ticket, why am I standing in line? Well, it's because I skipped the line to purchase tickets. This is the line for all of us who have tickets. Also, we all have to go through security, so you cannot skip that line. That is the line of people waiting to buy tickets today, and they'll have to wait till all of us go in and there's no more line, and then they can go in. Once we're inside, I can't take video or pictures in the security area, so talk to you again from the inside. All right, this is very cool. This is new. They don't make you change this barcoded ticket for a new ticket anymore. All right, guys, we are in. Let's go. There's a lot to see, but we are gonna beeline for the Sistine Chapel. All right, it is 8.12. This is the situation. All those people lined up at the front, but if you get right down to it and you just make your way and start running right towards the Sistine Chapel without stopping and without visiting all those other rooms, this is what it looks like. I'm not gonna be able to film inside the Sistine Chapel. I'm gonna film my way there so you can see the route. And afterwards, I'm gonna show you what to do when you leave the Sistine Chapel so you can come back through and see these beautiful museums at a slower pace. Now the Sistine Chapel itself doesn't actually open until 8.30. So we're gonna visit the Raphael rooms anyway, and uh, we'll be at the Sistine Chapel right at 8.30 when they open. So we are just on this little walkway that takes us over the Vatican parking lot, which actually is the other half of what used to be a much larger pinecone courtyard. The pinecone courtyard was designed by Donato Bramante in the early 1500s, and it was cut in half, and uh, the half that you visit is really beautiful, but it was actually twice that size. Even just seeing these rooms without anybody here is pretty amazing. This is a good opportunity to use the restroom if you need to go. You can also go, of course, after the Sistine. There are toilets throughout the museums. Basically, just follow the walkway, follow the signs, because you really can't go anywhere else. Okay, I'm about to go into the Sistine Chapel. It's 8.30, it's just now opening. I can't film inside, so see you on the other side. just left the Sistine Chapel and I'm gonna head back to the beginning of the museums because the exit of the Vatican Museums is the same as the entrance. When you leave the Sistine Chapel there are two ways to go out. One way is to go out the right hand side and that access is not open until 9 30. 
In any case, that's the exit that takes you to the shortcut that leads to St. Peter's Basilica, and it's only available to people who are on a guided tour that specifically includes that shortcut. The other exit of the Sistine Chapel is on the left-hand side. This is the exit that most people take, and it's the one that I had to take this morning as well. This exit on the left-hand side is the exit that takes you back to the beginning of the Vatican Museums, where you can either leave the building or go back and continue your visit. Okay, this is the exit. Now, if I were gonna go down this staircase right here, famous spiral staircase, then I would leave the museums. Now, my idea was to visit the Sistine Chapel and then see the museums at a slower pace. So instead of going down the spiral staircase, we're just gonna start over from the beginning of the museums. All right, now that we're back at the beginning and we can visit everything calmly, the first thing I'm gonna do is go and get some breakfast. There are two places to eat in the Vatican Museums. One of them is the Pinecone Courtyard. I just wanna go have a coffee and a pastry and get my day started. So we're actually gonna to go to the cafe on the inside of the museums. Follow me and I'll show you where it is. Now that the rush of the morning is over and I've had a quick bite to eat, I can tell you a little bit more about how I got my tickets and what that first part of the morning was like and how you can do it. To get my tickets, I simply went onto the Vatican Museum's website and I booked a ticket for myself for 8 a.m. They're hoping with these longer opening hours that more people will find tickets available for the times they want. I don't know how this is gonna play out as we move forward. It's currently February. This new opening schedule just started in January of this year. We'll see what happens as we get into high season later this spring. If you don't find the availability you want for that 8 a.m. hour and you wanna do what I did, then you can go onto a reseller site and buy your tickets there. Granted, there will be a little bit of a price difference because you're paying for an agency fee, but if that's what you want, it is a legit way to do it. And those of you worried about cancellations, those kinds of tickets, entry tickets, usually are not canceled because they're basically just entry tickets. We're not looking for really special tours where there are only a few spots available. So if you're just looking for an entry ticket like what I did, you should be able to find it on the Vatican Museum's website or on a third party reseller. I got here at about 20 minutes to eight and there were already a lot of people here, but I just stood in the line. We started to go in at about five minutes to eight so we could go through security. That line moved very quickly. The security line took all of five minutes. Once we were inside, we went straight upstairs. I can't film that for you, but I can just tell you, we went straight upstairs through the turnstiles and that's where I started to film for you. As with the Colosseum, whatever time is on your ticket, you pretty much have 15 minutes leeway on either side. So let's say for an 8.30 ticket, you could show up here at 8.15 or 8.45. But for an 8 a.m. ticket, obviously you can't enter before eight o'clock. You could enter about 8.15, 8.20. Now on these leeway times that I'm giving you, yes, you probably can uh, go outside that 15 minute line on either side for both the Colosseum and the Vatican, but I really wouldn't push it too far and I wouldn't risk it. So try to show up on time for your allotted ticket time. For both the Colosseum and the Vatican, tickets are nominative, which means that you need to show ID and they are checking your ID before you go in. So they check my ID to make sure that it matched what was on my ticket. If you buy your ticket on the official website, you're going to get a PDF that has a barcode on it and that's all you need to go in. So you can show that on your phone. In fact, your ID you can also show on your phone and it doesn't have to be a passport. As long as it is an official government ID, that is all that you need to enter these museums. Same goes for the Colosseum. I printed out my ticket because you just never know, but having it on your smart device is plenty. The visit to the Sistine Chapel took me half an hour to get there because I couldn't go in any earlier than 8.30. I stayed inside for about a half an hour. You could probably go there anytime between 8.30 and 9.30 and find it really uncrowded. Certainly now in February, as we get closer to high season, that really uncrowded moment might be shorter, but certainly in the very first um, 
half an hour to hour of the Sistine Chapel being open, you can find it pretty uncrowded. The exit from the Sistine Chapel to the Basilica is available only for tour groups and only for tour groups that are not part of the Vatican Museum. So if you book a tour of the Vatican Museums through the Vatican Museum's website, it does not include a visit to St. Peter's Basilica. It doesn't include the shortcut to St. Peter's Basilica. So if you want to take that shortcut, you have to go with an outside tour company and make sure that the tour includes the shortcut. Also double check that it's not a Wednesday because usually on Wednesdays the Pope is giving the papal audience and in that case they don't take the shortcut. They do something else. If it's a Wednesday and the Pope is not in town, then they will take the shortcut. So you can check the Pope's schedule on the Vatican Museum's website. All right, the goal of this video is to show you how to visit the Vatican Museums on your own. And the first part of this was to specifically show you how to see the Sistine Chapel without the crowds at the first opening hour. The second part of this video is where I'm going to show you how to visit the Vatican Museums on your own. The third part of this video will be showing you how to visit St. Peter's Basilica on your own after you leave the museums. If your goal was just to run and see the Sistine Chapel and then head right over to the Basilica, you can use the chapters in the description below to skip ahead to that part. Now I'm going to take you with me on my favorite tour of the Vatican Museums, just highlighting some of my favorite pieces. And I will be showing you the things that most tour companies show you along the way. But I'm going to point out some special things as well. First stop is going to be the Pinacoteca, the paintings gallery that most tours don't cover. We're about to go see arguably one of the most beautiful Raphael paintings, one of the most important Raphael paintings in the museums. This is his transfiguration, the last thing he did before he died in 1520. And just for your information, all of the tapestries you see in here were also designed by Raphael. If you ever visit the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, I did a video about it, you can see the original cartoons that Raphael drew as preparatory sketches for these tapestries. In the next room is the only Leonardo da Vinci painting in the entire museum's Actually, it's the only Leonardo da Vinci work in all of Rome. These are all clay models by Bernini for statues that are inside of St. Peter's Basilica. All right, you don't have to spend a lot of time in here maybe 15 minutes, but I think there are some works that are really important. The Raphael, the Da Vinci, the Caravaggio. I'm taking you into the Gregory Profane Museum very quickly to show you one of the most astounding mosaics from ancient Rome. You guys, do you see that there are shadows here? Like the little tiny mosaic has shadowing, shading. Look at this little mouse. Can you see the shadow of his tail? I absolutely love this mosaic. I think it is astounding. There's a lot to see in this wing, but I just wanted to show you that tile because I think it's amazing. Now we're gonna begin our visit, visiting the Pinecone Courtyard, which is what most tours normally cover. The Pinecone Courtyard is so called because of this pinecone right here behind me, which is in fact a fountain from ancient Rome. It was found not far from the Pantheon in a piazza called today Piazza della Pina, which means Piazza of the Pinecone. I think the two most photographed things in this courtyard are the pinecone and this giant globe over here. Here's the cafe behind me where you can just pop in and grab breakfast, lunch, or aperitivo, depending on the time of day. This whole wing is really beautiful and it's almost never crowded. Um, I love the mosaics on the floor. I love the Augustus of Prima Porta. I also love this beautiful Nile River statue. Let's take a closer look. This is the famous octagonal courtyard, so named because of its shape. And this is, as you can see, it's on the 
track of all of the tours that go through the Vatican Museums. Things to look for in this courtyard include the Laucon or Lauconte, which is a very important sculpture group, and the Apollo Belvedere, which is currently being restored. I hope that it will be ready uh, in time for the Jubilee. The Laucon sculpture is really important for a few reasons. Uh, just quickly, first of all, it's an amazing sculpture. It tells the story of a Trojan priest who is being drowned by one of the gods because he displeased them because he told Aeneas to flee Troy. This is part of the founding myth of Rome because Aeneas is the one who arrived on the shores of Italy eventually and his descendants, Romulus and Remus, founded Rome. The main reason I think that many people find it so important is because this is one of the sculptures that was unearthed in 1506 and it helped to begin the museums and guess who was on hand when it was unearthed? Michelangelo. All right, next stop, we're gonna go visit one of the most important pieces in the Vatican Museums, the Belvedere Torso. This is one of the most important pieces because it is the sculpture that made Michelangelo cry. It's the sculpture on which he based many of his figures in The Last Judgment in the Sistine Chapel. I love this sculpture and I would happily spend more time here, but I want to keep us moving just to show you some of these must-sees and the route you should follow. Next stop is going to be the Rotunda Room, which has a ceiling, a coffered ceiling, which was modeled after the Pantheon. There's also a bronze statue of Hercules, which is really rare, and this statue has been under restoration for quite a while and they've just unveiled it, so I'm really excited to see it. That bathtub behind me, made out of porphyry, very heavy stone from ancient Egypt, it was a bathtub for Emperor Nero. As you can see, there are a lot more people now than when I came in at eight o'clock, but just slowly making our way. This is called the Galleria dei Candelabri, which means candelabras and you can see them here on the sides. These are the candelabras that the uh, name of the gallery is referring to. You may have noticed something besides the crowds. Once we visited the Hall of the Candelabras, we were actually back to where we started. We started there this morning when there was nobody in those rooms. I think one of the main reasons to go back through the museums, to visit them calmly, to see more, is to see some of what you missed. And if you take the shortcut that I showed you to visit the Sistine Chapel first thing in the morning, you're going to miss the pinecone courtyard, you're going to miss the octagonal courtyard, the rooms of the animals, the Greek cross room, etc. But once you get to the gallery of the candelabras, you have seen these rooms already. Now, if you do want to spend more time here, you absolutely can. And this route is going to take us back where we were earlier. You can also go back and visit the Raphael rooms again. There will be more crowds, but you can spend more time there. And of course, you can go back inside of the Sistine Chapel if you want to see it again. Just be prepared for crowds. And so, on the illicit tour of the Vatican Museums, we are heading back out. We're not going to go to the Sistine Chapel. And we're out. To go to the Basilica, it's about a 15 minute walk, so we're gonna go to the right. Here we go. That walk took me 10 minutes and I hustled. So if you're doing this on your own, you're strolling, or you just want to take your time, you're not quite sure where you're going, give yourself at least 15, if not 20 minutes. As you can see, St. Peter's Square, it's really beautiful. It's also really crowded. And take a look at the line to get into St. Peter's Basilica. This line is gonna be about an hour long, I think. And it is definitely worth it to visit St. Peter's Basilica. It is a beautiful church, I highly recommend it. One of the reasons you might want to take a tour is if it includes the shortcut to the Basilica from the Sistine Chapel, because I think that's really worth saving all of this time. But now you have all the information you need to decide if you want to take an early bird tour through a tour company or do this on your own. 
For more about how to visit the Sistine Chapel without the crowds, check out my video right here.